Known for his distinctive voice and debonair demeanor, Powell's performances often exuded charm, wit, and elegance. Throughout his illustrious career, he earned multiple Academy Award nominations and left an indelible mark on the history of cinema. With a magnetic presence that illuminated every frame, Powell embodied charisma and style, effortlessly commanding the spotlight in iconic films. Yet, beyond the silver screen, Powell's life was a tapestry woven with tragedy and heartbreak, including the loss of two soulmates and a terrifying brush with death. Despite these challenges, Powell, known as the epitome of debonair sophistication, found solace and happiness, leaving an indelible mark on both the screen and the hearts of his audience. Join us as we journey through the smoky, martini-infused world of William Powell. William Powell's arrival in 1892 marked the beginning of a remarkable journey. Born in the vibrant city of Pittsburgh, he was the cherished only child of Nettie Manila, Nay Brady, and Horatio Warren Powell, whose dedication and guidance would shape his formative years. Raised in a household filled with love and encouragement, young William developed a keen intellect and a spirited curiosity about the world around him. His father's profession as an accountant instilled in him a strong sense of discipline and attention to detail from an early age. In 1907, when William was just 15 years old, the Powell family embarked on a significant move to Kansas City, Missouri. This transition brought new adventures and challenges, but also opportunities for growth and self-discovery. Settling into their new home, William quickly adapted to the bustling atmosphere of Kansas City. Amidst the dynamic backdrop of the city's cultural scene, he eagerly embraced the vibrant energy and diverse experiences it offered. Attending Central High School in Kansas City, William Powell not only excelled academically, but also discovered his passion for performance and storytelling. Engaging in extracurricular activities, he found himself drawn to the stage, where he honed his natural talent for captivating audiences with his presence and charisma. It was during these formative years that the seeds of his future career in the entertainment industry were sown, laying the groundwork for the iconic figure he would later become. William Powell, a man whose destiny took a fascinating turn from the hallowed halls of academia to the dazzling lights of Broadway and Hollywood. Initially set on a path to study law at the University of Kansas, Powell's insatiable thirst for adventure and creativity soon beckoned him elsewhere. With the bustling streets of New York City calling his name, Powell bid farewell to legal textbooks and embraced the allure of the stage at the esteemed American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Here, amidst the bustling energy of the theater district, he found his true calling, immersing himself in the art of storytelling and the magic of performance. In 1912, armed with boundless ambition and raw talent, Powell ventured into the dynamic world of vaudeville and stock companies, honing his craft and captivating audiences with every step. From the vaudeville circuit to the stages of Broadway, Powell's star continued to rise, fueled by his unwavering passion and dedication to his craft. But it was in the glitzy realm of Hollywood that Powell's talents truly found their home. In 1922, he made his silver screen debut in spectacular fashion, sharing the screen with luminaries like John Barrymore in a mesmerizing production of Sherlock Holmes, where his portrayal of the iconic Professor Moriarty left audiences spellbound. Powell's journey through Hollywood's golden era was marked by a string of iconic performances, from his riveting portrayal of a vengeful film director in the silent masterpiece, the last command to his breakout role as the suave detective Philo Vance in The Canary Murder Case. With each role, Powell showcased his remarkable range and depth as an actor, captivating audiences with his commanding presence and magnetic charisma. As the era of silent film gave way to the dawn of talkies, Powell's rich, stage-developed voice became his greatest asset, propelling him to even greater heights of success and acclaim. Throughout the Roaring Twenties and beyond, Powell remained a beloved figure on both stage and screen, leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment that continues to resonate to this day. Powell's portrayal of the debonair detective Nick Charles in the beloved Thin Man series not only solidified his status as a cinematic icon, but also showcased his remarkable range as an actor. Beginning with The Thin Man in 1934, 
Powell's effortless charisma and on-screen chemistry with co-star Myrna Lowy brought the character to life in a way that resonated with audiences worldwide. The film, based on Dashiell Hammett's novel, was a critical and commercial success, earning Powell his first Academy Award nomination in 1935. In 1930, William Powell was a powerful figure at Paramount Pictures. Despite his successful career, his personal life was troubled by a strained marriage and an unconventional living arrangement with his parents. However, he found solace in a secret apartment named Mr. Thorne, filled with enticing French photographs that reflected his private desires. Powell was once part of a notorious bachelor's club with Ronald Coleman and Richard Barthelmis, embodying the carefree spirit of 1920s Hollywood. As time passed, he and his friends distanced themselves from their wild youth, opting for a more subdued lifestyle. They stepped away from the extravagant and debaucherous world of cirrhosis by the sea, where figures like David Niven and Errol Flynn reveled in excess. When William Powell embarked on his European adventure with Ronnie and Ernest in 1930, he couldn't help but notice the vibrant playboys and playgirls surrounding him. Despite the lively atmosphere, he felt even more isolated than he did back home. Carol Lombard, at 21, was living with her mother but was fiercely independent. She adopted the name Carol Lombard at 15, finding the Jane Peters too mundane. Following a serious car accident at 17, she joined Max Sennett as a bathing beauty to kickstart her career. Upon moving to Paramount after Paythes' closure, Carol was still honing her on-screen persona. Man of the World, a melodrama about a blackmailer in love with his target, required a pre-filming discussion. William Powell, a seasoned leading man, and the determined Carol Lombard, clashed initially due to their strong personalities. Despite their differences, their initial meeting turned into a candid conversation about life, love, and everything in between. Their date marked the beginning of something truly special, with conversation flowing effortlessly between them. Their on-screen chemistry in Man of the World breathed life into an otherwise lackluster production, drawing praise for their intensely captivating performances. Beyond the set, William Powell found Carol's irreverent humor irresistible, leading to playful banter and the endearing nickname Junior. Paramount seized the opportunity to cast them together again in Ladies' Man, leveraging their real-life romance for cinematic magic. However, their lives diverged significantly, with Carol's vivacious spirit contrasting William's more orderly demeanor. Despite their differences, William's charm won Carol over, leading him to envision a future where he would eventually ask her to marry him, a moment that would forever shape their lives together. But for that to happen, both parties would need to make significant compromises. William Powell desperately wanted Carol to give up her career, but there was no chance of that happening. On the other hand, Carol longed to go out and enjoy the nightlife, but William Powell was not interested in that at all. William Powell was so smitten with Carol that he proposed to her almost every half hour. Initially, Carol had reservations due to the high rate of failed marriages in the entertainment industry. William Powell, having experienced a failed marriage before, understood her concerns. However, he believed that Carol was the most wonderful girl in the world and was willing to give up his cherished freedom for her. Their wedding took place on June 26, 1931. William Powell was so nervous that he even forgot which finger the ring belonged on. They planned to spend two weeks in Hawaii for a relaxing honeymoon, but unfortunately, Carol fell ill with the flu. As they settled into their new life together and their new home, both William Powell and Carol made efforts to make each other happy. William Powell supported Carol's career aspirations, while Carol tried her best to be the perfect housewife. Carol later revealed to Garson Karnin that she played William Powell's game to win his favor, just as one would try to get on the good side of a difficult person. However, with William Powell, it was different because they were legitimately married. She affectionately referred to him as Philo after his role as the detective Philo Vance. Their time together was steeped in domesticity, where she learned the intricacies of managing a household and attending to his needs. She excelled in her role, 
striving to embody the epitome of a traditional wife, tailored to Philo's desires. Interestingly, during this period, Carol found herself entangled in the world of cinema, appearing in The No Man of Her Own, a film known for its steamy love scenes with Clark Gable. This venture into the limelight added fuel to the fire of controversy surrounding their personal lives, prompting scrutiny from outside observers like Father Daniel Lord, who questioned William Powell's tolerance of his wife's involvement in what he deemed filthy movies. After two years of marriage, the couple decided to part ways, realizing that their attempts to fulfill each other's desires were stifling rather than fulfilling. Adela St. John Rogers, reflecting on Carol's decision, noted her swift and decisive action in ending the marriage, sparing both herself and William from further turmoil. Despite the tears shed and the pain endured, Carol found solace in preserving their bond as cherished friends, a testament to the depth of their connection even after parting ways romantically. Carol expressed her admiration for William both as an actor and as a person, emphasizing the importance of mutual respect in their relationship. She believed that their ability to maintain a friendly rapport post-divorce was a testament to their shared values and the absence of bitterness stemming from quarrels. Despite their separation, Carol affirmed her initial fondness for William, acknowledging that their marriage had been founded on genuine affection. Perhaps liberated from the constraints of married life, Carol and William found themselves rekindling their connection, albeit temporarily. Such occurrences are not uncommon, as individuals often rediscover their spark after parting ways. Eventually, both Carol and William moved on to new relationships, signaling the end of a chapter and the beginning of new adventures. Powell's life was filled with both profound sorrow and unexpected joy. The tragic airplane crash that claimed the life of the talented actress Carol Lombard in 1942 left him in a state of immense grief. It was a devastating loss that weighed heavily on his heart. But amidst the darkness, a ray of light emerged. Before Carol, Powell had found love in the arms of his co-star Gene Harlow. Their connection had blossomed during the filming of Reckless in 1935, but their time together was tragically cut short when Jean fell victim to illness in 1937. The pain of losing her was immeasurable. Yet, fate had something special in store for Powell. It was on January 6, 1940, that he crossed paths with actress Diana Lewis. In a whirlwind romance, they fell in love and decided to tie the knot just three weeks after their first encounter. The deep bond they shared was evident, and Diana willingly left her own film career behind to fully devote herself to Powell. Their love stood the test of time and endured for decades, lasting until Powell's passing in 1984. Diana's unwavering dedication and sacrifice spoke volumes about the depth of their connection. Their love story is a remarkable testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the incredible power of unwavering devotion. In March of 1938, Powell received the devastating news of his rectal cancer diagnosis. He bravely faced surgery and experimental radium treatment, and miraculously, within two years, the disease was completely in remission. With his focus on his health and grieving the loss of Gene Harlow, Powell decided to take a break from acting for over a year during this challenging time. Death Powell, a legendary actor known for his suave charm and impeccable comedic timing, bid farewell to the world on March 5, 1984. At the age of 91, he succumbed to pneumonia, leaving behind a legacy that would forever be etched in the annals of Hollywood history. His final resting place became the Serene Desert Memorial Park, nestled in a picturesque cathedral city of California's Palm Springs. It was here, amidst the tranquil beauty of the desert landscape, that Powell found eternal peace. In a poignant display of love and togetherness, Powell's remains were interred alongside those of his beloved third wife, Diana Lewis. This was a partnership that had endured the test of time, a union that had brought joy and happiness to both their lives. Now, in death, they would forever be side by side, their love immortalized in the hallowed grounds of the cemetery. But Powell's legacy did not end there. His son, William David Powell, who had shared his father's passion for the arts, also found his final resting place beside them. 
A testament to the bond between father and son, their graves formed a poignant triad, a symbol of the enduring familial ties that had shaped Powell's life. As the years passed, visitors to the Desert Memorial Park would come to pay their respects to the great actor, his presence still palpable in the air. The laughter he had brought to countless audiences, the joy he had spread through his performances, lingered on, a gentle reminder of the indelible mark he had left on the world of entertainment. And so, in the quiet solitude of the Desert Memorial Park, Powell's spirit lived on, his memory forever enshrined in the hearts of those who had been touched by his talent and charisma. As the wind whispered through the desert, carrying with it the echoes of his laughter, Powell's legacy continued to shine brightly, a beacon of inspiration for generations to come.